Hello, welcome to another video by Mox Marine. In this video, I am going to show you how to set the timing dynamically. Um, I've discussed timing before, uh, uh, setting it uh, static timing. And that's when you drop the stripper in and line up your uh, rotor with your number one cylinder uh, post in your stripper cap with the engine top dead center. But that's, that's static timing. Uh, that's not the final step. So the final step is to set dynamic timing on a running engine. And to do that, you need a timing light, which is this right here. This is, I've had this for years. And it's a Xenon timing light, which is a better than the Neon. So um, anyway, I've got the timing light hooked up. But before I get into that, um, I believe this is gonna be a, either five or six video in this series called uh, Spark the Eel series playlist. And um, up to everything I've done now, you've, you've worked on a engine that's not running. So this engine, uh, in this step, to do the timing, you have to have the engine running. And now we're getting into uh, some serious business. So um, I've been doing mechanic work since I was 15 and I'm very used to being uh, safe around engines. But if you're not new, if you're not experienced around engines, you need to be, realize that this is a machine. It doesn't care about you. It doesn't know you and it will kill you. Um, these belts right here, when the, or this belt when it's spinning around, if you get hair, uh, long hair, jewelry, your fingers, toes, arms, legs, whatever caught in it, it will spit you up or it'll, it'll chew you up, spit you out. So um, you want to be very careful of that. Plus there's, it could be hot. You got temperature. So you have to be careful of getting burned. You have to be careful about getting tangled up in machinery. Um, there's also there's electrical shock, which means you could be shocked and then fall because you weren't expecting to get shot and fall into the belt. So there's all kinds of dangers in working on a, a running engine. So I just wanted to point out that at this stage, you need to be extremely careful about what you're doing. And uh, part of that carefulness is being prepared and, and get everything prepped before you actually start the engine. So back to what I was saying, um, just just be, care, be be think safe and be safe with what, about what you're doing. So I've got my timing light hooked up. I've got it on the, uh, the timing light has what's called an inductive pickup and it's coming off the number one cylinder. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to do anything other than number one because that's what you're setting the timing with. So hook your timing light onto the uh, pickup on the number one cylinder wire. And then uh, I've got my battery, uh, my timing light hooked up, to, hooked up to the battery. And then you have what's called a set timing harness. It's the one that's got the alligator clip on it and it's got a little loop of wire on it. Mine's all black. Um, I made them, I know I might come out red wire, but I made that one out black. Um, so that's that's my personal one that I use for uh, my customers or when I'm setting up systems in my shop. Um, so anyway, so you want to get prepped with that too. So what you do is you reach behind the distributor, you unplug the connector, it looks just like this as part of your shift kill harness. You unplug that, plug this in its place in the same hole and uh, snap it in. Uh, and then pull the wire, the, uh, let me get this out of your way so you can see what I'm doing here. So you pull the wire over here and kind of keep the alligator clip in this general vicinity because you're going to hook it up to one of them two screws right there when it's um, as, we're, as we're doing this uh, process. Um, that and then it helps to have what's called a distributor wrench. This is a kind of a crooked wrench. That's a nine sixteenths socket. Um, they make them in half and nine sixteenths, but this is one I've had for shoot, probably again just as old as I, since I was fifteen years old. But um, it helps to get to the distributor adjusting nut or bolt, which is right back down. You see it right here. So that nut or that bolt. Um, holds a clamp down which keeps the distributor from spinning when it's running. So you loosen that bolt until you can just barely, you want to be able to just barely turn that distributor with your bare hand. And I say just barely. It needs to be tight where it won't spin on its own. But you need to be able to adjust it while the engine's running to get the time it's set. All right. So I'm always ready to crank this engine. Before I do that, I'll just discuss the uh, difference between V6 and V8. So V6s, the uh, especially ones with time, uh, excuse me, with the uh, Vortec engines, um, the Delco EST timing curve was built for the Vortec engines. So this happens to be a Vortec engine, so that timing curve it right matches this engine perfectly. Um, if you don't have a Vortec engine, if you have an engine, a V6 engine before 1995, 1995 and earlier, um, I'll do a separate video on how to figure out what your timing should be on those kind of engines. But for this engine, um, the timing curve says that the timing should be one degree before top dead center when you're doing the set timing. Well, one degree before top dead center is one degree away from zero top dead center. So when you do the static timing, you're basically setting the 
the, you're using your bare eye, your naked eye, you're setting the timing at pretty close to zero degrees before top dead center because you've got the engine set at top dead center with the uh, timing marks. And then you're adjusting the distributor so the rotor points at the number one uh, uh, post and distributor cap. So for all practical purposes, you are doing static timing at zero degrees top dead center, which is like I say, one degree off from one degree before top dead center. So what I'm getting at is a V6 engine should fire up fairly easily because chances are you might not, you might not even have to adjust the timing. It may already be right because when you set it with your naked eye, you can't get it, you can't differentiate between zero and one degrees. But um, the bottom line is that V6s should fire right up with no problems. Um, and then you use the process that I'm about to show you how to set the timing. Um, V8s um, are a little, little different. I believe they're for 5.0 is 10 degrees and for a, uh, for a 5.7 is 12 degrees. And that's, again, that's for Vortex engines. Um, again, any other engine other than the Vortex, I will do another video on how to do the timing for those. But this the particular video is primarily about the Vortex which is 1996 and later. So um, the, the V8s, since they're 10 degrees and 12 degrees before top dead center, you might be a little late when you set your timing statically, when you drop your distributor in, you might be a little late. So the engine's gonna be a little sluggish to start and maybe a little sluggish while it's running. So on those, um, once you get it running, if you can get it running, um, let's see, if you get it running, you, and it's not running smooth enough, not running fast enough, you can reach back, reach back there, rotate the distributor. By the way, rotating the distributor counterclockwise from where you sit, counterclockwise will advance the timing, and rotating it clockwise will retard the timing. So if it's running a little rough and not really smooth, you can rotate it just a tad clock, uh, counterclockwise, and it should run a little better. That's on the V8s. V6s, hopefully you don't have to touch it. Um, so once it's running, and you have the... Uh, the engine running well enough to where it stays running and doesn't shut off on you. You then um, take the alligator clip and you hook it up back there on one of those two pins and that will put the engine into set timing mode which will make the uh, distributor, it'll take the module's timing curve out of out of place and now you're doing the set timing. And again, you just take your timing light, shine it right down through there at your timing marks um, and it you move the distributor and get the marks where you need it to be. And like I say on the V6, it's one degree before top dead center which is just a smidgen, like less than about a sixteenth of an inch to the to that side of that time mark on your engine. And on V8s is 10 and 12. There should be some kind of mark on your engine to tell you where 10 and 12 are. But um, so the bottom line is that um, that's how you set timing with the timing uh, harness. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do all that and I'm going to fire this engine up and then we'll uh, set the timing. Uh, it's going to be hard to speak over this running engine. So um, I'm going to have to yell and uh, you'll have to just try to hear me. All right, the engine's now running to set the timing. You take your shift kill. I mean, your uh, set timing. You connect it to the, uh, the power. Then you will slow down. Then point your timing light at the timing mark. Rotate the distributor to, to the mark line up at one degree 